Good afternoon, guys. Well, I'm back in uh, my usual loving space, my peace of mind, uh, Enzo's kitchen. Um, I love doing food for you guys. I'm just preparing something else today because I have a very important um, procedure to do. So I'm busy making uh, a dough for uh, pizza. So I'm using this wonderful uh, farina, which is flour, Dalari flour, which has got a really good strength. It's a W rating of 280. And I'm going to make a no need bread stroke pizza dough so that you guys can see how quickly. This is a very quick mix. It takes three hours to mix everything together. And um, we leave it. I'll come back in three hours time and I'll show you the next procedure right now. I'll go ahead with what we're doing. So inside this bowl, I've got three cups of flour. What I add to this is a quarter teaspoon of dry yeast. I sprinkle it in and I blend it in with a fork so that it blends in quite nicely all over. Mix it well. There we go. Then to this I add one teaspoon of salt. I like uh, my dough a little bit uh, saltier than normal. Some people put a little bit less, but one teaspoon is about right. We blend this all together. And then to this we add 375 milliliters of water, which I've got here. And it's warm water. Uh, the temperature of about 54 degrees Celsius. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is um, with cold water, normally we would have to leave for, say, 8 to 24 hours to ferment and grow and double in size. So because this is a quick mix that I'm doing, I've speeded up the process by adding uh, warm water. Um, that will activate the yeast a little bit quick, quicker and you will see the results when we come back. So, to the flour, I just pour in the water that is required, and I blend all this in, and you'll see how this dough comes out a little sticky. Make sure that you absorb everything. As you can see, it's starting to absorb all the moisture. And this will become a sort of sticky dough and we leave it to rise for, as I said, for three hours. Um, I do always keep a little flour aside for afterwards. What I will be using here is semolina just to give it that extra bit of body at the end. But you, we will get there just now. You can see how nicely this is mixing. Just make sure that you absorb all the flour. Let me tell you about my supplier. Wonderful company. It's called the Italian Daily Online. I will leave a link below on my description in my video if you guys want to order any products from them, like as flour and the, what I'm going to be using. And I'll show you a little preview later of what is available online. Um, please do so. And also, I must ask you that if you like the video and you've got any comments, please make your comments below and like that video and share right you can see i've got a sticky dough that is formed here and i'm now going to all the flour has been absorbed i'm now going to leave this for three hours to rise i did wash my hands beforehand yes i did and there we go. I have got family and friends that are waiting to see all this that I'm preparing. We did a porchetta a while ago and a couple of other short videos. But uh, this is something that we're going to be moving on. Excuse me. <clears throat> so now I just slightly damp the bowl and I take... 
my cling wrap. Just a piece of this. Cling film, cling wrap, whatever you want to call it. And if I wet the bowl, you can see that it sticks very nicely. Get my faithful knife. Like this. And we leave it for three hours. And you'll see little bubbles form and I'll carry on with the process after that. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button and share. Thank you. Right. Here we go. Here we go. Guys, this is the dough. I tipped it over. It's grown. It's been three hours. I tipped it over onto my counter. I added a little oil just so it doesn't stick. Now I'm going to use some of this fabulous oil. Ayama olive oil, just a little in my hand so that it doesn't, the dough doesn't stick. Pat it on the top. So now what we're going to do here is basically just create a few folds, as you can see, like this. And then I fold it again and again, just to allow the air to enter in the dough and allow it to actually become more stable because um, once I've done this I'm going to leave it to rest for another 30 minutes and then I will uh, create my pizza and my bread you can see how I'm sealing it you must make sure that that is at the bottom this closure you can see how nicely it's folded very pliable Beautiful to work with, really, really good dough. And this was just three hours of fermentation and rising. Okay, so it's almost there. There we go. Now I'm going to leave it like this for half an hour. It feels really smooth, really, really pliable. Um, half an hour's time, we'll work with it a bit more, and uh, you'll see. Um, what the results are going to be. Obviously, I'm going to make a pizza, maybe two. I'll do one bread, one pizza, but for the moment, I'm going to definitely do a pizza. Okay, so we're back after 30 minutes. Um, what I decided to do is just to prepare two uh, small, well, this is going to be for a small bread, and this will be for a pizza. Um, they're probably going to be quite a sort of thickish pizza because it's 300 grams of dough here and the balance is for the bread. So just for um, the sake of, of uh, getting on, I'm going to take the bread and put it one side and uh, leave it while I prepare the pizza. So here's our dough. We take this. And we mix it, okay, I'm using a semolina to give me a little bit of body and a bit of crust at the bottom of the of the pizza when I'm finished. So I've got nice semolina um, from the same company as I use the flour, the Lari. And you can see these are products that I use uh, from Poly. Uh, artichokes, there's pesto, uh, there's um, capers, I've got a... Um, Pomodoro and basil, that's tomato and basil, which I've got here to use on my pizza. I've got some mushrooms, uh, all delicious, delicious stuff, absolutely delicious. So let me not, I will make other dishes with those as we go along. So for now, let's just plonk this into here. Let's turn him over. And then I'm going to start from the center. Start working my dough out. As you probably have seen in many other videos, um, we Italians, we like to make a little border on uh, our pizza. We don't like a thin, thin crust all the way through. I need to sprinkle a little more of this. 
and the semolina stuff is amazing you can um, make pasta with semolina you can do quite a few things with it add it to your dough so you can see the dough is nice and pliable it really really nice consistency and making a nice border all the way around then don't, don't be scared to slap it around a little bit right that's about the size that I would like where he's gonna give me a nice crust and thin in the middle so right now on top of this I'm going to start spreading my basil and tomato mixture that comes from poly so put a little of this in the center and then spread it around not to go over the border but just in this area as you can see what I'm doing and covering the surface nicely I love tomatoes you know there's something about tomatoes that is really really good for everybody um, I like that sort of bitter sweet taste in them this has got amazing amazing odor um, fragrance so on here we're going to this is a fresh uh, mozzarella it's, um, it was in water so I drained it and um, this is called Fior di Latte and uh, I've let it drain and dry a little bit otherwise it's too wet so I'm going to place some of my mozzarella on top here like this you don't want the water to come out and evaporate and wet our dough right and then just a few uh, basil leaves that i have in my fridge i'll be back just hang in there hang in there don't go away i'll be right back just take some fresh basil Oh, I love the smell of this stuff. It's really, really, absolutely amazing. Some nice fresh basil leaves that I got earlier today. That should do the trick. There we go. And off it goes into my oven. Right. The oven is preheated at its maximum temperature of 230 uh, top and bottom I do have a stone in the oven I'm going to be placing it on the stove so I will show you just now and then my spade for for my pizza I need to put a little of this on it across stretch it nicely and into the oven she goes okay this is gonna be quite warm there's my stone you can see the oven is nice and warm there we go I would think in this oven anything between three to five minutes because it's very hot I'll see you just now okay so we got a pizza at the oven look at that absolutely beautiful look at that fantastic fantastic let's see so um, it looks let's hear Oh, it sounds absolutely amazing. 
So let's have a look at the crunch. So I'm not a pizza maker, but I love my my custom made pizzas. You know what I mean? So let's see what it what this does in the middle. This is very hot still, but I'm uh, very uh, excited to show you the dough in the on the borders. You know. Oh, look at that, that's, let me just cut here. Let me turn this around. Look at that, nice and, look at that, nice and fluffy, opened, beautiful, look at this. That's really, really good, that's what we wanted, that's what we wanted here. You can see here, look at that. Maybe not as um, as open as many of the qualified chefs or pizza makers, you know, but the bottom line is we want that softness, a very digestible type of dough. So, without further ado, I'm going to get stuck into this pizza and I'm going to enjoy it. And yeah, I forgot to tell you, we have power failure in about 10 minutes. So I've got a bread that I wanted to put into the oven, which I'm going to have to postpone till tomorrow. So I'm going to put that bread in the fridge, which keeps overnight. Tomorrow I'll take it out about half an hour, an hour before, and I'll bake it in the little Dutch oven. And I will send some videos about the, the bread tomorrow. Have a good night and enjoy your Thursday night. So guys, that uh, leftover dough I left on the side last night due to power failure, um, I made a little bread. So let's check it out. So I put that dough inside uh, some parchment paper and I stuck it into this little pot, which is my little Dutch oven. Let's open it and see. Oh my goodness me, look at that bread. Okay, this is not finished just yet, obviously. I'm just going to remove this paper and leave it inside there for an, another, say, 10 minutes in the oven. And then I'll uh, show you what it looks like afterwards. Okay, so we're back online, 10 minutes into the oven. Open like this and look at this bread. Oh, it's too hot that pot to do anything, but look at that, nothing stuck. Listen, it is crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. It's a bit too hot to cut now. I'm going to just pause it a few minutes and then I'm going to cut it through so you can see what's going on inside. Hey, here we've got it. Check this out. Now let's see. Let's cut it. Look, this is it. Oh, there's a little bit of parchment paper stuck in here. Not serious. Paper's good for you, you know, comes from the trees and gives us something back all the time. Let's see. Oh, listen to that. Oh my goodness, listen to that. Oh, look at that. Look at that bread. Look at that bread. Nice and soft. Oh, look at that. It's quite moist. Nice and airy, yeah, I quite, I will um, obviously endeavor to taste it. Maybe I could make myself a little bruschetta a little later, just slice it, put some bruschetta sauce on from Polly, and uh, a couple of artichokes. Yeah, that's uh, the bread that was left over, the dough, I mean, making into bread. There you go, gents and ladies.